Hi all, Happy New Year. So glad you could join me today. Hope everyone is safe and keeping well in these very trying times. When I bought my first film camera in the 1970s, the only tripods available to me were the models from the local photo finisher where I took my film. They were basic and inexpensive, they were hard to unfold, they were hard to set up, and they were very hard to use. I frankly didn't use the one I purchased very much, and I ditched it as soon as I could. For years, I only shot handheld until I went back to school in 2014 and was told that a tripod was a mandatory accessory for a, a real pro. So I did what most people would do then. I bought a store brand on sale, the cheapest version, without much thought of longevity. One day, I attached the camera to the tripod only to have the camera fall lens first to the ground. The clamp had released. The lens was toast. The tripod, well, it was replaced that day. A few days ago, a fellow proudly announced to me that he had purchased the Nikon Z9, the new flagship camera, valued at $7,000 Canadian for just the body. He then went on to ask what tripod I would recommend that he buy as long as it was under $200. While I can appreciate getting value for the dollar, it would scare me now to put my luxury home on a foundation of straw. My advice, consider features and functions first, match camera build to tripod build, and then find the best deal. Now tripods come in so many shapes and sizes that your head will spin, and my job today is hopefully to help you sort through the options. And at this stage of my life, weight and size of any equipment, including tripods, comes into play big time and is a major reason why I will or won't buy a product. I'm happy to say, though, that manufacturers of tripods are also taking this into account. First up, what I call the birder's bundle. <laughs> this setup is big, heavy, stable, and versatile. It's only useful if you're staying in one place such as on a shoreline, close to the car, in a birder's blind, or near a known roosting location and feeding location. This is, as noted, the birder's bundle. Hopefully you like that name. Um, this is a combination that allows you to stay in one place, essentially, as mentioned. Uh, it wouldn't be something that you would carry around uh, as you're hiking on a trail or, or hiking up and down hills or even hiking any distance from your car. Um, this combination involves a uh, camera with a long lens. The long lens is heavy um, and awkward to manage and you want the ability to maintain that combination safely, securely and yet give you the flexibility to be able to use it to track a bird. And the way you do that is through what's called a gimbal mount. So in this particular setup you've got a head that rotates in two axes and just by having a combination of those two axes you can get wherever you need to go to be able to chase that bird. It's uh, quite a um, flexible setup because um, not only are you supporting the weight of the camera, right, no hands, uh, but you also have the utmost flexibility without touching a single knob to be able to get to where you need to get to be able to track your intended subject. Second, what I call the Pano Portable. <laughs> How do you like the names I've given these? If you are a purist panorama photographer, you have to have a two-axis pano head, such as the one here, along with pano arms and nodal sliders, which are not attached at the moment. This is specifically designed to allow me to take panorama photographs very easily. Um, as with the previous setup, it is a camera that's placed at eye level to save my aching back. And it uses a setup that um, facilitates the type of photography that I'm trying to do. In this particular case, I've got a panorama head by Acrotech. I've got a panorama leveling base also by Acrotech and it's all supported by a medium strength Gitzo tripod. Uh, so like the previous head, uh, the, the birding setup, uh, this particular head only moves in two axes. Um, it moves up and down 
and it moves side to side. So you don't have a tilt axis built into this particular setup. This particular setup has a thinner set of tripod legs than the previous setup. Um, there isn't as much weight on the top of this tripod, so the stability uh, in this situation is achieved, it can be achieved by using a thinner set of tripod legs. Uh, but in this case, I have the ability, like the previous setup, uh, to rotate the camera to do my panning motions and to be able to get an absolutely steady um, and on plane shot. And I can rotate it both um, side to side and up and down uh, without introducing any mo motions or movements that I don't need. My third setup is what I call landscape luxury. <laughs> this is my most versatile tripod and allows me to set up in any terrain no matter how uneven or how tilted that terrain might be. So you might think I have shrunk a little bit <laughs> in showing you this particular tripod setup. But as mentioned in the write-up uh, or in the previous segment, um, this is my landscape luxury setup. And it is a tripod that is designed to extend to a height of seven feet if required. Um, the purpose of that isn't so much to get the camera up to seven feet, it's to be able to compensate for uneven terrain where you have to extend one leg longer than the other. This is a really right stuff combination, uh, really right stuff ball head, really right stuff set of legs, and I absolutely love their equipment. It is so well made and so sturdy and so reliable uh, that I have the utmost confidence that my camera is not going to fall off this set of legs in any landscape setting that I might find myself in. Um, I probably went to a beefier ball head than necessary just because of that previous incident where the camera fell off the tripod and I wanted to make sure that that would never happen again. Oh, by the way, some of you might be wondering what this little satchel is that's hanging off the top um, or hanging around the middle of the tripods that I've shown you so far. That's what's called a stone bag and it's a really neat thing that I found uh, on the B&H website. It allows you to attach uh, to your tripod, uh, just a little place where you can drop uh, things that you might need to store temporarily off the ground so that you don't end up having to put them on the ground and potentially either getting them dirty or losing them. So stone bags, about $10. They're easily detachable, easily attachable to any tripod, any set of tripod legs, and they've served me enormously well. Again, saving my aching back from having to bend forward <laughs> to pick up something that I would have had to otherwise put on the ground. And the last option today, I call my tiny tot. I went looking for the smallest, lightest, yet functional tripod that I could find. It had to be able to hold my everyday camera and lenses my camera with a battery grip and up to a 70 to 200 millimeter zoom lens. I found it in this Peak Design travel tripod. This curious design, hopefully you can see it, has had great, albeit somewhat mixed reviews, with most comments being around the price. In Canada, this carbon fiber model is upwards of $700. I knew I wanted one when I first saw it, but I had to confirm that it would make my photography, my theme of the day, and of this series, more convenient. It is my most portable tripod, weighing in at two pounds, made by Peak Design, and it is their Peak Design carbon fiber travel tripod. Um, it is an absolutely superb design. Now, as mentioned in the previous piece, there are some limitations, no panning capability, and in the wind it can be unstable, a little bit unstable. But for general photography shooting in fairly calm conditions, um, this is an absolute dream to be able to take with you on a hike. Uh, as you can see, I've got a, a lens here that is longer than a standard lens. This is a 70 to 200 f4 RF mount lens. Um, now, you do have to make a choice about what size of lens you're going to carry with this tripod and with this camera setup, but as you can see, it can easily support my camera, my battery grip, and a 70 to 200 lens, which is amazing for a tripod that weighs two pounds. Um, you can easily maneuver it into whatever position you might need. 
this is a full ball head, so it has motion in all three axes. Um, and it does require that you hold the camera with one hand while you loosen and move the tripod head with the other. Oh, and by the way, uh, like all of the other options that I've shown you, it does allow me to shoot at eye level. Although in, get, in this case, I do have to raise the ball head up a few inches to be able to get that eye level perspective that, uh, that I prefer. One of the other decisions when selecting a tripod is the working height that it can provide you. Some travel tripods deliberately have short maximum working heights in order to be more portable. Some operate only as low as four feet. Those of us with bad backs need to be able to work at eye level or above. And all of my tripods do this, sometimes through center columns and sometimes without center columns. You know what? I, at this stage of my life, don't mind using a center column tripod as long as it's stable. The opposite of working at height is also a consideration. How low can it go? Sometimes your best shot is at or near ground level, and the ability to lower and operate your camera easily is another convenience consideration for us older photographers. Both my landscape luxury and my tiny tot setups have the ability to spread their legs wide, getting me to about two feet off the ground. Luckily, the tilt screen on my camera doesn't require me to be that low as well. Some tripods can alternatively reverse the camera and hang it downward, almost touching the ground. This setup is frankly useless to me as I can't use the tilt screen without bending down to almost ground level myself. And at this stage of my life, I don't do that anymore. Okay, so let's answer the big question. How many tripods are enough? At minimum, I would recommend two. One beefy setup for the times when you need a long lens in a stable, reliable setup in one location, and a second easy-to-carry tripod for hiking and when interesting angles or long exposures present themselves as opportunities. I suspect, though, that I'll eventually bring myself down to just one tripod, and that'll be guided strictly by my age and my ability to carry anything further. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and please consider subscribing to my channel. Also, leave me a comment to share your experiences about the tripods that you've selected or the tripods that you've used in the past, what's worked for you and what hasn't. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much and hope to see you again soon.